Live from New York, it's Ask This Engineer. Hey everybody, and welcome to another wonderful Wednesday. We're here as always at the Adafruit factory. This is how we do our design, manufacturing, engineering, testing, shipping, return, support, videos, all the good stuff that you know and love from Adafruit, all the code you like to use, the hardware you play with. It's here at the Adafruit factory, and this is where we are too. We are the Adafruit, I guess. So I'm Lady Ada, with me is Mr. Lady Ada. We've got a payphone that you can call later. Ring, ring. ring. And uh, today we're going to an exciting show, lots of news, some new products. Yes. Things that are occurring. Let's get to it. Mailbags. Yeah, want to do I this? I don't know, whatever. It's all good. Yeah, let's take it off. On tonight's show, the code is Lady Jessica. 10% off the native fruit store all the way up to 11.59 p.m. I'll explain this code and more later. It supports us, Adafruit, an open source company. Our well, quest to create the Quizza Tadarak. Yes. Show and tell. People around the world showing and sharing their projects with us. Lady Ada will talk about who was on the show, what they shared. Pack the mailbags and stop by, read your letters to us. Time travel, look back in the world of makers, hackers, artists, engineers, and more. Made in New York City. We're a factory in New York City. We make stuff. We're going to show some videos. 3D printing, microbit, Raspberry Pi, new products. We'll answer your question, and we'll give some stuff away at the end of the show. All that and more on, you guessed it, Ask an Engineer. Woo! Okay, Lady Ada. There is so much. Yes, um, just a little uh, reminder. Code Lady Jessica, 10% off all the way up to 11.59 p.m. You are watching Ask an Engineer. This is 8 p.m. We do this every Wednesday. We just did the show and tell. That's 7.30. On checkout, if you're in New York City and you're in one of the zip codes that we do same-day delivery before 11 a.m., that's right. You can get same-day delivery. In <laughs> the continental U.S., we have free UPS ground. $200 or more. We also have DHL shipping. Yay, Canada. And we also have the U.K. And we have France. And we have Germany. Germany. It's super secret. So, Nobody knows about it yeah, except for everybody watching this. It's working out. It's out. working out. And it just allows this stuff. You prepaid customs. Everything's taken care of. On checkout, that's it. Boom. Super easy. Boom, as they say. Boom, as they say. Yeah. And then... Um, Boom, sir. Boom. Yeah. And uh, right Freeze. now, yeah, if you have an account, you get a different pin each time uh, if you spend $99 or more. Or if you just do the guest account and get a random one. And we have all the rules and such on our site, adafruit.com slash free. Okay, show and tell. Every week, 730 people around the world show and share stuff. The longest running live show and tell in the world. Ever. Ever. For electronics. Lead data. What was on show and tell? We had Jam Packed starting off in no particular order. Or no and Pedro showed off this week's project. It's a, a Circuit Python based arcade control box. Uh, I wrote this for you so you could control Wirecast, which is a software we're using right now to make us appear in like different sized boxes. And um, this little box would let you change scenes very easily. And No and Pedro like that's pretty useful. Uh, sometimes the things that we make for ourselves are the most useful things for others. So um, that's their project. They showed that off. They made a two by two one. The one I made for you is one by six. But they have a project for that, and we'll talk about that more a little bit later. Tony D uh, showed off this week's project. He's working on a circuit walker shoe. It's like the fire walker shoe, but with the circuit playground board. And so you wouldn't have to do any wiring or soldering. It would do step detection and then um, flash, light up, and maybe even make a sound. Uh, based on your steps. That's kind of a cool thing based on a paper that he read. Um, and then Scott gave some updates. Uh, he's also from Adafruit uh, Northwest. Uh, he's gotten micro, S micro SD support for CircuitPython going. We're uh, wrapping up 1.0 release candidate 2. Nobody's said anything, so we think it's good to go. And then uh, we're going to be working on 2.0 next. Um, adding micro SD support. He's also given us an update on the Sci-5 Feather. He's working on bringing it up. Not quite brought up yet. Uh, crystal's not crystalline, oscillating. We're going to figure that out and get that in the store as soon as it works. Um, some visitors. We had Mia, who uh, her assistant dad built her a 3D printed spinner that is like Pokemon themed. But she personally used Fusion 360 to create her own 3D printed box and printed it out. And it looks pretty cool. It's a nice box. Yeah. It's the first thing you do do is make a robot. Make yeah, a it's cool that these tools have, are available online and uh, they're very beginner friendly so you can get started right away and print right away. She will never have a problem not having the right size box. Yeah. Always the right size box available, which is an issue. Store things. It won't be the right size box. 
Uh, Greg is building a really intense boat monitor. He's using an ESP32 Feather. Uh, historically, he used a TFT Feather Wing, but uh, he's going to add way more sensors. A smart TFT, he's got like two temperature sensors, a float sensor, uh, light sensors, motion sensor. Oh, like, I, I, don't keep, I couldn't even keep track. There's like 20 sensors he's adding to this ESP32. Um, one wire sensors. Um, it's going to run his whole boat. So he said maybe he'll do a show and boat from his boat next time. That'd be neat. Boat project. Um, Adam, he graduated high school. Congratulations. You're a high school graduate. Uh, he has more time now to work on his scanning electron microscope. So he's got a new workshop. He cleaned it up. It's pretty nice. He built a workbench. He power washed it. And uh, he's wrap, recapping his scanning electron microscope. And he'll give us a new update maybe next week. Pretty cool. Stuart, uh, give us an update on his home security system. Do not break into Stuart's house, seriously. He has like 8,000 zones and sensors and alerts and Raspberry Pis and feathers all watching. Everything that's happening in his house. Uh, he showed us some of his wiring diagrams. He had CCTV. He's got uh, lead acid battery backup. So don't even think you can go there and like cut the power and you're safe. You're not. He's got two lead acid batteries. Yeah. The other, the other thing I really like is um, the home automation projects that are open source. So the person who's making it knows what's going on. Um, some of the commercial ones from Nest or whatever, um, or some of these new yeah, Am no. Amazon devices, um, you know, they can reach in or and then people find out later it's sending data they don't know. So um, this is kind of cool. I think it's one of the things that um, should be open source. Like voting machines should be open source. And I yeah. think um, also uh, home automation should be open source. And it's pretty easy to put all this together now. Yeah, this is super cool. Uh, Brian made a really nice ESP8266 plus Nokia uh, display. It's for cryptocurrencies. Right now he's showing Ethereum and um, Bitcoin. What's really neat is you can telegram into it and send it commands, which I think is really cool. So you can send it like secure messages to say, hey, you know, I'm holding this much Ethereum or I'm holding this much um, Bitcoin. Tell me what my, uh, you know, uh, wallet value is and it will automatically update and display it. Um, it's also like known as like a stress machine because it's going constantly going up and down. <laughs> like one day you're like so happy and then they're like, no, I lost it all. Yeah. Um, but pretty sweet little build. I like the Telegram inter interface too. That's, that's a new one. I haven't seen that one yet. Uh, Jeffrey and Hazel uh, built a lot of unicorn horns and they're working on making one with LEDs. Um, Hazel has all the unicorn horns. She has like eight. Yes. A bit, maybe a little bit too many, maybe nope. not enough. I don't know. Can't decide. Uh, no unicorns were harmed in the making of these horns are 3d printed with yeah. ninja flex yeah so all cool. color combinations yeah you can tell every morning she's just like i want a yellow and purple one today i want a white and green one yeah what a neat world for young people you can just print whatever type of unicorn horn you want and light it up with the code that you write and the electronics that you've uh, learned to use that's cool yeah when i was a kid i had no unicorn horns yeah it, like zero yeah sad i didn't even know what i was missing Aiden is 3D printing some paper mache molding stuff. He's, he's kind of seeing how 3D printing can help uh, recycling. So adding, so creating like mold so that he can uh, strain paper waste and turn it into like uh, pucks that can be used for construction or maybe, um, you know, use like a pellet here. All sorts of cool stuff going on there. So he's experimenting with sustainable 3D printing design. Yeah, I liked his project because um, I could, I mentioned this on the show until I could see uh, kids especially, they would be able to, uh, you know, grind up paper and then use glue and then put it in this 3D printed thing and then make little blocks with it. Um, it'd be kind of cool to see like a Play-Doh recycle center, but not Play-Doh, but like the idea that you would um, have young people think about it early and often. Yeah. Um, besides just putting the cans in the right bin, maybe making stuff with some of these reclaimed materials, as yes. they say. Okay. All, That's our show and tell update. All participants on the show and tell get an as seen on the show and tell sticker. Email support at adafruit.com. Um, we have some other show and telly stuff coming up pretty soon. Um, we're doing the, the My uh, Mini Race Car project with TE and DigiKey, so that's coming up really soon. That's our little Adabot um, race car route. Zoom, Adabot. zoom. Zoom, zoom. You won. Um, and then we have all this on our site, but if you want to uh, participate, you can. Uh, we'll have this Wednesday, July 12th at 7 p.m. It's a special edition, and we'll have an engineer from TE, and we're going to be talking about electric cars and more with Judith, and uh, we're going to show off some cool projects. Okay. This is part of our Adafruit live series of videos that we do all the time. This week on Desk of Lady Ada, we're back. 
So this one, Lady Ada, you can you could set it up. You played with the uh, iExtruder? Yeah, I got this Kickstarter that I backed like a year ago, came in. Um, so I tried it out. I made a couple of mistakes putting it together, but then I didn't make a mistake putting it together. Got it working. Uh, I was just practicing. You know, there's like an OLED. You can like change the settings, how much it extrudes. Yeah. It's kind of handy if you don't want to hurt your hand while um, using extrusion. So you can see here, I'm like practicing. And yeah, you can cool. like tweak the settings and everything and change the different nozzles. So I, I tried all that. And then eventually we um, went under the microscope and I showed how I would have used it. Yeah, that's good. Cool. Under the microscope. And that worked out really well too. Live unboxing. Um, and then we did a video. We launched it last week, the AdaBox unboxing video. And uh, what's neat about this is it's a time lapse with time lapses in it. So we oh, show goodness. all the things in AdaBox. Yeah. And then at the end, we show Lady Ada signing 3,500 copies of make. Yeah, AdaBox 004s are shipping out. Um, if you haven't gotten yours yet, just hold tight. Uh, we're shipping out hundreds yeah. every day. So time lapse, time lapse. And then we had a, we had a chit chat. We put up a whole bunch of projects and, and guides on it. And um, we sell all the parts in this shop. So if you didn't pick up the AdaBox 4, you can uh, still um, order all the components from the store and, and basically yeah. follow the guide yourself. Now, um, I have to get to the code and tell you why it's what it is. So um, the code is Lady Jessica, 10% off in the Adafruit store. And uh, for those of you who like Dune, I know most of the audience We kind of have to. Yeah, um, so this is uh, Lady Jessica from the, the movie Dune, directed by David Lynch. Um, so last week, the first time in Adafruit history, we accidentally had the same code, uh, sorry, we had the same code for a brief period of time, and the codes were able to stack. And a very honest person said, hey, I, I noticed this. And so um, uh, Jessica, who's in charge of community smart publishing, um, said, oh, you know, should we figure out a way for that not to happen or whatever? And I said, I don't think it happens. I'll just go back to using Dune um, references for codes. And she said, Lady Jessica. So it's Lady Jessica. However, there's even more to the story. So um, Adabox was an idea back in 2008. I had this list of things that we were going to do together. Um, at Adafruit, and I knew we'd get to a subscription service eventually, Adabox, but right underneath my little to-do list, I had Dune subscription box, because I thought it'd be needed to have a book, and then people could read books along together, and you get a bunch of stuff that yeah, goes with the book. Yeah, a Chris knife you can stab people yeah. with, yeah, like a little, a, a, little, a little vial of the water of life water to, life, give, to give to, to someone. So um, the idea was, um, and we, we'll probably do a book reading with an Adabox in the future, is, you know, like Harry Potter really brought a lot of kids into reading? I think with video streaming, in addition to just watching play, people play video games, I think there'll be people who read books, and then the people, like a book club, that'll be in the chat rooms also reading along or, or talking about a book. So, um, so I didn't get to that one yet. And then I saw, um, and I, 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 you know, I do my rounds every day, and this is a Dune subscription box, and this is from uh, Comic Book Girl 19. and. Um, I saw this and I was just late. It, the last day that could ship or order it was May 31st. And you get a, a, a book and a pen a and a bookmark and a little necklace that God has... God Emperor bookmark. Yeah, and you get a little necklace with spice in it. And uh, so I quickly went on Twitter. How's the treaties? Yeah, I went on Twitter and I, and I tweeted and I said, um, okay, what if I traded you a Dune cutout activity book and a Dune storybook? So it's a deal. So I'm going to get this Dune subscription box. That's why the code is that. That's why this is all together. And the origin of of Adabox, um, at the time it was just called like, you know, Ada, Adafruit Subscription Service, was I like the idea of reading along to books and I thought Doom would be a funny one, but of course we have electronics and all that. So that's that's the, the origin story yeah. of all this. That's why we're here. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, good. Um, so next up. I approve. Yeah, next up, uh, Tony D, uh, he did a video. This is the fidget spinner with the tachometer. Yeah. So um, the code's been written in Arduino to start but you can use your Circuit Playground Express or Circuit Playground Classic, and it will um, you know, basically allow you to do the, use the light sensor as a tachometer, which is kind of cool. So you can um, use the NeoPixels to flash uh, light off of um, the fidget spinner, and then you get like a square wave as it, as it spins, you get yeah. a reflection, and then you can count the pulses. Yeah, and this is all part of our um, CircuitPython series of projects and more. Um, we're getting pretty close to calling the 1.0 1.0. Um, Scott talked about that in Show and Tell, but um, it's release candidates like 1.0. It's here. So RC2. Yeah. So if you're thinking about learning computer programming or electronics, and it always seemed 
kind of hard or unapproachable, um, this plugs in, shows up as a USB drive. You can double click it and edit in a text file and your editing code right there. You can use any IDE. Yep. Um, this is cool. This is super, super cool. cool. Okay. Uh, it's time for some mail. So we read these letters every week at our all company meeting called State of the Fruit. And at State of the Fruit, um, we give hug reports, the staff set of hug reports, and then we also read letters that you all sent to us. So this okay. one is from Richard. Dear Lady Ada and Phil, besides the great product for makers and enthusiastic customer support and promises like no blinking Christmas trees, what makes me confident Adafruit will stay a cool company is something that didn't even occur uh, to you to promise. When you showed the Huzzah 8266 breakout board on new products, Lady Ada commented that she didn't know why anyone would use the CC3000 with the 8266 available. I hate available. the CC3000. Yeah. I, I, I did chip down. Even more than the cc 3100 or I never used the 200 because yeah. I was so traumatized with the CC3000. Having watched travesties like the Intel 46SX, 60 megahertz Pentium, and HP decided it was more profitable to sell crappy printers, I think it's awesome that there is never a question whether you will provide the best product uh, you can even when it competes with your existing products. I'm looking forward to helping teach STEM summer camp next month, largely using Raspberry Pi and Adafruit sensors. Regards, Richard. Okay. Um, Yes. If you want to, you can call on Bitstab and leave us a message. Um, at the and we sometimes play those as part of our mailbag. But also, we'll open up the phone lines at the end of the show. That's our phone number. Okay. Time travel. Beep 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 beep. Yeah. So uh, time travel this week. Um, this is kind of neat. Happy birthday, Helen Keller. Here's a quote. I long to accomplish a great and noble task, but it's my chief duty to accomplish humble tasks as though they were great and noble. Helen Keller. Born 1880, first uh, blind person and deaf person to earn a Bachelor of Arts degree. Um, on our site, when you go to it, we cycle out quotes at the bottom. Many Helen Keller quotes. So if y'all haven't heard Helen Keller, do some Wikipedia sleuthing. There's movies. Yeah. There's pages. It's fascinating stuff. Amazing story, amazing person. Happy birthday. Okay, we have other news. Open source hardware. Yay, open source hardware is in, the, in our news lately. Um, so we're a member of Oshawa, it's Open Source Hardware Association. And about, I don't know, six months ago or so, Oshawa, um, was try they're trying to figure out a way to know if something's open source hardware. So what they did is they came up with a bunch of things. You should have files. They mm -hmm. should be editable. There's a definition. Yeah, there's definition. All the original Arduino founders, for instance, signed off on it. We signed uh, it. We signed it. And uh, eventually there was a community logo, it was a gear logo, but that wasn't trademarkable. And they had a coexistence agreement with OSI, open source.org. But anyways, there's a new mark that they have that they do own. And you can... This one, the square one. The square one, yeah. And rectangular, what, rectangular. And what you can do is you can go to the, the Oshawa site and you can say, here's our GitHub repo, here's all the things. They check it out and it's like, congratulations, we'll assign you an... Uh, a open source hardware number, and uh, we are pleased to announce that da, 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 um, the Metro Express Express is now open source hardware. So this is our board, and well, it's always been open source hardware, but now it's like now it's official number. super certified. So uh, it only took ten minutes, and I got an email right back right away. You're now officially certified as open source hardware by the Open Source Hardware Association. Congratulations! Our UID is. US 00067, and it's now listed there. Yay. Um, here's uh, what it looks like. Dude, if somebody acts fast, I'm just saying you can get number 68. Yeah, and then we, I wanted 666, but it, you know we have to do some more mm -hmm. officers artwork. So um, next round of boards, we'll probably have that on the back. Yeah. So this means that if you're doing open source hardware and you want to show it, you want to say, hey, it is, it does mean something, just like the gear logo, just like when someone says open source hardware, it does mean something. There's files that are editable, the code is under a license, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. um, it, there's clarity. I think that's the thing. And this even helps clarity. And I think they do have a mechanism where like, hey, if you put this on a board and it's not really certified, whatever, they'd probably ask you not to do that because yeah. they do on the trademark. So anywho, um, I'll get to that in a bit because uh, there's some other news, but um, let's go over what's in the learning system, which has a lot of open source hardware this week. Yes, we're actually um, updating some things on the learning guide, so there'll be more guides uh, very, very shortly. We have a couple that are in the wings. Um, this week's projects, we got last week's uh, mini TFT uh, 
tutorial for the little uh, little display we put in the shop next last week. It's super cute. We have a guide for using that, uh, including Arduino code and all that good stuff. We also have this week's 3D Hangouts project, the Arcade Button Control Box. This is Circuit Python keyboard mode, so it's very easy to update and modify the code. You don't have to compile any code or Arduino. Just drag a few files onto um, the disk drive that appears when you plug the board in and you're ready to rock, which is pretty cool. And then um, this week's new product is the Adafruit AMG 8833 uh, thermal camera sensor. We'll be showing that off. Uh, that includes, that guide includes Arduino code as well as Python code for both CircuitPython and Raspberry Pi. Okay. Um, so back to the- How many guys do we have? Uh, we have 1,239. Okay, getting there. Get okay, there. Um, this Friday, is uh, Open Source Friday. Wow. Yeah, so this is on GitHub, and they're trying to do this thing where they're saying, hey, you know, all this great stuff that we have, all the ways that we're able to elevate each other, stand on the shoulders of giants. Um, open Source is made by people just like you. This Friday, invest a few hours and contribute to the software you use and love. And so you can um, put your stuff on GitHub. Um, you can share your, your, your code. I, I like the idea of, like, a national open source day. Anything, maybe make suggestions something that can be open source, or if you have something, you can do that. I'll tell you one thing that's never oh. going to be said no to, by the way. Open source, it's not just about writing code. If you help people with documentation or projects, that is as useful or more useful yeah. than just opening issues and, and closing Yeah, bugs. doing projects that's with good. open source, yeah. That's good, but anytime you can do documentation or projects or teach yeah. people how to use the software, that is also incredibly, incredibly handy. Yeah, so that brings me to the inevitable free Arduino. Um, so Arduino is in the news um, right now on many different sites. Today, um, it was on Olamec site. And Olamec is like one of the like open source hardware companies that we're big fans of. They're not only, they're actually one of the like first companies to yeah. do maker electronics. Like they were, they've been around for a very long time. Yeah. Um, as long or, or almost as long as Parallax. And yeah. I remember I used to pick up Olamec programmer, port, the, the Parallel port programmer boards when I was in uh, yeah. high school. So they've been around for quite a long time. They make uh, open source laptops, Linux computers. Yeah. ESP there, boards, a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, when, when we're asked, like, what are some cool open source hardware companies, we say Olamec. So um, there's a, there's two issues, maybe three, but I'll just stick to two right now, with uh, the new Arduino, arduino.org. Um, the first one is there was a Promise Foundation, and that hasn't happened yet. And the other thing is the arduino.org boards that say open source hardware are not. Um, maybe they're going to put up the files. Maybe some of them are open source. Um, no one will comment from Arduino.org to, to us, um, probably because it's us. Um, but other people are asking questions. And so this is a quote from the Olmec site. So that entire article on their site. Um, so, uh, so many people are now asking themselves the question, is Arduino project hijacked and turned into closed source project, and how will this affect the Arduino community in the future, Olamex. And one of the reasons that people are asking this is because if you look at the new um, Arduino industrial, uh, it says open source hardware. It says, and I'll flip over to the uh, the, the actual page. It says, um, oops, I've known the four of us. It says <laughs> the, in, the industrial 101 is open source hardware. You can build your own board using the following files. And it's not true. Um, on the back of the board, it's powered by Lenino and Dog Hunter. That's uh, the same company that's owned by the person who currently owns most of Arduino right now, the new CEO, uh, Federico Musto. So um, we've emailed a ton of times, but when you actually go to the site and download the files, like we did, um, the Eagle file isn't an Eagle file, it's an ORCAD file. And uh, I need that little switcher button. Um, the, the Eagle file is a... a I think this one is the yeah the, the eagle yeah. file is not actually eagle file it's actually an ORCAD schematic. It's an file. ORCAD schematic file. But there's so many by the way and I could be wrong it could be an eagle file but only of yeah. the but, but master board not the daughter board yeah, I don't know great so, so anyways um, it, it's not a file that has the information that you could use to make your own board um, when you download and open it it's the same thing as the schematic and there's no license on any of this stuff on the PDF it says. Um, Dog Hunter. There's no licensing. There's no in the module. It's just a block it, box. I mean, yeah. There's no. It just says module, and that the whole section is left out. So yeah. It's like it's not complete. And you know, if they don't want to publish it, that's fine. But just don't yeah. call it open source hardware. Yeah. Actually, I, I personally don't care. Like, if you don't want to do open source hardware, just say Arduino no. is not open source it's hardware fine. anymore. But um, if you look at the board, that's for sale. That you can buy. It's advertised as open source hardware. It says open source all over the place. And if you put your logo on a tin it's assumed that that thing too is open source. There's an Arduino logo, Arduino logo, and the companies that are now in this like weirdo new version of Arduino, even though they say it's one company, it's actually a bunch of uh, 
companies. Yeah, it's all over the place. Um, in a Yeah, it's not <laughs> it's not open source, but they 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 seem to own it, and they also have um, different uh, owners. If you look at who the owner of the file is, it's Dog Hunter. It's not even Arduino. So it's really confusing. It's really weird. Um, you know, maybe other people can ask them. Um, it's at the point where lots of sites are writing about it because Arduino, no update. Arduino is the highest profile open source hardware project and something dramatically different is going on. Yeah, if they don't want to do open source, that's fine. They just can't, like, I just don't want them to say that. Cause it yeah. does. The thing is, is that when the leader of the open source, like historically the leader of the open source hardware community does something different, everyone else says, well, if they're doing it, that must mean yeah. it's okay. Like it, it sets the tone for what the expectations are. And I yeah. want the whole point of having open source hardware definition was to stop people from like releasing incomplete schematics. Yeah. Like not even like schematics that are complete, like no board layout files, but like not even complete schematics and saying this is open source hardware. Like it's it's unfair to the people who do release everything. Yeah. And there's people who like release every single file, the CAD yeah, we files, spend schematic a, We spend files. a lot of time on this and so do a lot of other companies and it's just bonkers. Yeah. So anyways, um, they're probably not going to reply to us ever. Um, I started emailing Arduino.org, that entity dog hunter in them three years ago about like, hey, what are you doing? And then um, we've emailed each month for comment and uh, it's it, it's bad. This is this is kind of bad. Well, you know, it's up to the community to decide. Yeah. So, um, oh, for the folks who said, why not ask Massimo? Massimo doesn't own Arduino. It's Federico Musto. Yeah, it's not his company that owns those company files anymore. anymore. So, anywho. And he says, it's not up to me. You have to ask that other company. Yeah, when we were told there's one Arduino now, but it's actually not. It's it's yeah. CC Logistics and Dog Hunter and Lenino. Just we've emailed and everybody. B, B, uh, BTCC. It's, it's not good for the entire community. If you look at some of our past shows, you see um, like AT Makers uh, helped Ella with uh, something that helps uh, her with her wheelchair. Um, that was only possible because of open source, because of stuff like Arduino. And to not have it available now and something different and weird going on and not getting any answers and having a foundation promise that could maybe police this, that Arduino said they're going to do, and then asking where the files are. I mean, the people that are asking for files are like people like Bunny and like Evil Mad Scientist. Like the, there's been a clock ticking. Um, for years on the Arduino Yun, mm -hmm. and now there's a whole other slew of products also incomplete. Also, I think I you could say it's just like oh the you know it, ooh the link was wrong, but to say it's an eagle file and it's not to say it's an editable file that you can use something and it isn't. There's a black box. It's just, it, it it's purposely hiding mm -hmm. and like to not even have clear ownership. Like right now, it does it, the, the schematic doesn't say Arduino. Yeah. Yeah, it's not good. Okay. Um, so that's open source hardware news. Um, speaking of, congratulations, Mitch. Mitch won the Mitch Award. <laughs> uh, the Free Maker Award 2017. Now I it's have kind of cool. There's like a wrench and it's like Yeah. Um, a so I have so I have a uh, I have a, a historical thing here. Back in two thousand eight, um, sorry, two thousand eleven, um, Make won the Mitch Altman Maker Hero Award, and it was the award that uh, I had wanted to do. Make wanted or make gave it? Um, this was, this, they... Or they wanted to do Yeah, so I wanted to do a Mitch Altman Award. You wanted to do it, okay. He would get the first one, and then other people that are like Mitch Altman, who's an open source hardware pioneer, goes around the world teaching people electronics, founds hacker spaces. Um, I thought that'd be a neat thing. Anyways. So we'll but now there is one. Well, he got one. Yeah. From this other I place. mean, it's pretty much a Mitch Altman Award. Yeah. It says okay. Mitch Altman on it. Um, don't forget, we have the uh, buy one, give one. Did you key? Mm -hmm. You buy a circuit playground. Did we you give key? one. Give one, girls. Good. Okay, next up, you're in the news. Face is open source. Congratulations, Lay Data. There's a book coming out. There's a website right now, and it's pretty cool. Um, this is the book. Foose. This is the book, and uh, you just got your photo taken, and you're in this. This is you. You're one of the faces of open source hardware and open source. So that's uh, on the site. Um, you can check out our blog post on this today. And then also, Adafruit's in the news. It's in uh, XRDS. That's the Academy for Machine. Um, I don't know what the heck XRDS does. Yeah, it's, it's, it's for, Academy for... It's just called Crossroads. It's the Association for Computing Machinery. Yeah, the ACM. Yeah, and we have... Uh, Crossroads. Yeah, we have some Adafruit in there. And Do you want me to show this off? Well, I have it. 
And you wrote an article. It's running an alt dot business, being a good cause, and doing good business. But there's a lot of cool people in here. Yeah. And so um, this is just a quick preview. Um, You're in there. It talks about a lot of the culture things and how we run Adafruit in lots of different ways. So if you're interested in running a business, we talk about that. Yeah. There's also Joy, um, Nate and Alicia have an article at Open Source Hardware. Yeah. There is uh, Josh Lifton is in here. He's got an article about um, crowd supply. Uh, we did that article in there. Yeah. Okay. Um, Jay Chi is in here. And then who else? There's one more person. Some of the people I don't know. Anyways, all good. Very interesting. All about people and how they run their companies and, and the things that they've learned. So check yeah. out. If you're a subscriber or if your university is a subscriber, maybe pick a copy up of the ACM Crossroads. Yep. And speaking of manufacturing, running business, here's the first video. Loading up some feeders. Yep. Loading the feeders. Big feeders. Popping them in. Picking up big parts. Derp, 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 derp. Big parts. Yeah, this is, I think the vision system has to do two parts to yeah. check. Being it's done. Yes. Uh, the oven? Yeah, next up. Selective solder stuff going on here. It's the belt. Just doing some rework with the microscope. Testing going on. Well, that person has really hot hands. Yeah, that's how we test the uh, sensors. Yeah. And then we have um, a beautiful sunrise here in New York. And this camera is going out the other side of Adafruit. Um, oh, that's nice. Isn't that nice? I like the cloud reflection off of the yeah. uh, one world. And then we also have a complimentary video to any sunrise is a sunset. And it's dark. Look at that. You can see all the lights going off. Bing, 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 bing. That's cool. Okay, uh, 3D printing. Now I'm Pedro printing up a 3D printing storm. You ready? Take it away, zoop zoop. Here's the arcade. Yeah. Button. Circuit Python.
Well, I'm all alone now. Okay, here's a sped up 3D printing video. Okay, and we have a new segment that we've been doing, Microbit Mondays. If you have a cool Microbit project, um, just go to adafruit.com slash contact. This week, um, this is the 15 minute project on MakeCode. It's a uh, Microbit, battery holder, headphones, crack doll cl clips, you could have music come out. Yeah, it could do like a voice also. Just Isn't that cool? Yeah. Crocodile clips. Croc, croc clips. Yeah. Some okay. people say alligator clips, <laughs> people say croc clips. I think croc clips is probably cooler sounder, but sounding, but I, I say alligator. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I hear you. Both really hurt your hands if you pinch them with the... Yeah. Pi news. Um, lots of stuff in the Pi world this week. First up, uh, the Pi Foundation merged with Coder Dojo. Mm -hmm. So it's a global network of uh, coding clubs for kids. Yep. And they're uh, from like age 7 to 17. And they're teaming up with Raspberry Pi, so they'll be able to teach even more people using Raspberry Pi and the network of people at Coder Dojo. So that's neat. Neat. More neat stuff. Um, Scratch 2.0 is now released for Raspberry Pi. Yes, this is actually really cool. It's a big deal. Yeah, it's standalone, <laughs> so you don't have to use uh, Flash on a web page. Um, they're working on speeding it up, but basically you get Flash, you get Scratch 2.0. Yeah. And they added GPIO plugins, so it's it's the scratch everyone's more used to now. Um, you can interface with hardware, so we'll probably be doing some cool projects with that. Yeah. And uh, you don't need internet connection. <clears throat> but wait, there's more. So, Raspbian de Desktop is out, and I think the neatest thing about this update is, and now it ships with uh, Thony. Thony, yeah. I don't know how to say it. It's a it's a, it's a simplified <laughs> Python editor. Yeah. With, so you could um, use this with you could use this with Circuit Python. I I don't know. I think you can. I, I think it's tied in with Python, but I'm I was gonna look into it because it has like some. You can open and save files. You can open and save files, but what it does is it tries to do some smart stuff in the background, and yeah. I want to make sure that you can pull it away. Yeah. And well, we're gonna try it, it out. Yeah, because I I don't know if it's like has hooks into Python. Anyways, we'll, and even we'll if you it. can't, maybe we'll try to figure out a way so you can. Yes, we could probably find a way to, to do it um, okay. by pulling it apart. But it is, it's a simplified IDE, which I, I like. And um, it has one of the things that I, we added to the web IDE, which is that you can see the variable values, that which is, cool. is pretty cool. OK. So uh, before we get going to new products, Lady Ada, the code is Lady Jessica, 10% off on the Ada for store all the way up to 11.59 PM. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Hit it. New, 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 Good work. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you have an Adafruit account and you want to go into your account and get the new product newsletter, we will never send you one unless you want one. We don't do that. You can. Adafruit.com slash newsletter. This is not Adafruit Daily, which is just our regular newsletters that we do. No spam at all. Yes. People like it. Somebody tweeted. They said it's just pretty awesome. We yeah. try to keep it like a nice newsletter. We just tell you what the latest news yeah. things are and news. And then, of course, subscribe to our <coughs> blog if you want, like, a daily onslaught of everything happening yeah. all the time. So I have one kind of returning new product. So we got the uh, Axie Draw. And then uh, Asher, who's here, uh, did this today. So I have a little video. This is... Put it together. Yeah. And he did this all in Python 3. And uh, the Axie Draw is neat because you can do art. You can do generative art. You could use Inkscape. You can also just write straight up code. And uh, cool. I was thinking about using this instead of having you sign the thirty five hundred makes. Um, you said it's a little slow. Well, we could have done it. It would just been it, it. 
and I, but I think people would have said they really wanted your signature, not a robot signature. This is really nice. Look how beautiful that is. Yeah. And it works with anything. You don't have to use a sharpie. You use a marker. You oh, yeah. use a pen. You I wanted use... this so it would be visible. Yeah. But uh, I should have really dropped this. Nice work. Yeah. Me, 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 it's me, so me, peaceful. Me, yeah. Okay. So, you know. Boom. Returning, returning product. Okay. okay so pick lady. one up in the shop. Yeah. We sell those. Yeah. Okay. Wire. Magnet wire. We have finally some enameled magnet wire. I mean to get this in the store for a bit, and um, I finally remembered. Uh, so this is magnet wire. It's extremely thin enameled copper wire it's used for a couple different things um sometimes people wrap it around uh to make antennas you can make antennas with it or magnet coils voice coils motors inductors it's basically you know whenever you need a lot of wires uh that passes a significant amount of current even though it's quite thin you can still you know pass an amp through it um so even briefly and um i think it's like 36 gauge maybe or 38 gauge wire uh, another thing it's really good for is surface mount soldering, retouch, like rework of boards. If you want a jumper to very small connections or you want to solder directly to a surface mount wire pin, um, surface mount uh, uh, pad pin or pad or pin, you can do that with this magnet wire. What gauge? Uh, it's 0.1 millimeter, very thin. Um, and it's enameled. So you can burn the enamel off with either a lighter or uh, what I like to do is you melt a little bit of solder onto the tip of a soldering iron and you poke the wire in. So I can show it on the overhead. It's, it's really thin, but I can, I can show it off. So yeah, you can see how fine it is. And it's, it does have um, enameling on it. So it, it's not conductive. Like, you know, if you, if you connect it to this, this actually doesn't connect from wire to wire because it's got that enameling on it. Um, and then you just burn it off if you want to solder to it, and you can just solder to the wire. So you get, uh, you know, a couple meters of it. It's not a ton, but honestly, I don't think you ever need a ton of this wire. Like, you usually only need, like, a couple inches at a time, um, unless you're, you know, doing a huge voice coil. But for general purpose, uh, we work soldering, coil winding, I think it's a good amount. Okay. So check it out. Magnet wire. Next up. It's a cable. It's a multi-use uh, power cable. And uh, I actually got this for me to use, but it, it was so handy. I was like, oh, you know what? I should probably put this in the shop. Basically, you can connect it up to your multimeter or your uh, bench shop power supply, as you see here. And it just gives you a lot of different output options. So instead of having like lots of wires that you're constantly switching around, like I'm often testing things and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna tr you know, test the current draw of this LED. And then I'm like, oh, I have to test this feather. Or then I'm gonna plug in a USB device. It kind of has um, three of the most popular options. So let's go to the overhead and I can show this off. So you've got um, here, this is the banana clips. This goes into your multimeter or your <coughs> benchtop power supply. It just plugs right in. That's normal. And there's a little multiplexer boxy thing. And on the other end, you have a, a lot of options. So um, most popular is uh, crocodile or alligator clips. Um, so this is really nice, easy if you want to connect to like wires that are thicker or you know PCP pads or something. And they're shrouded, so that's nice. We also have mini grabbers. This is good if you want to grab to like smaller uh, pins or pads, but uh, sometimes you know you want crocodile clips, and sometimes you want the mini grabbers. They're both good. These are good for uh, you know grabbing to 0.1 inch uh, pitch wire, so like on a on a header board. Um, and then also you have a USB. Um, the thing with the USB is the data lines are not connected, so it's not good for charging like iPhones or iPods. It is good for like charging almost anything else that uh, charges or powers over USB. But it's a good way to basically connect and do current draw tests with your uh, power supply. There's also these green and yellow wires, but they're actually just connected to the same as the red black ones So we don't use them. They're a little confusing. I was hoping they were data, but they're not they're not the data lines They're just um, they're like random lines. So you basically get USB Crocodile and mini grabber, but that's still pretty nice and um, way easier than what I do Which is I always like seem to have to rewire up a USB connector to my power supply yeah. to test uh, You know for example, I I like to test um, power draw like a Raspberry Pi doing something sometimes I'll hook it up to my um, uh, bench top supply to just verify it works at different voltages and and what the current draw at each voltage is So there's no actual electronics in it. It's just like a little PCB inside of here okay. I can open this up if people really want but uh, and then just brought out to these different cables. Very handy though, a little accessory for your 
Okay. Got a shelf supply. And the star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ida, is this. This is the AMG 8833. This is a kind of neat sensor. This has actually been around for a while, but the price recently dropped to a, a reasonable amount. So this is the um, an 8x8 thermal array, like basically mini camera. So you can get like, you know, cameras in the shop that are like 200 pixels by 100 pixels. And, and you get like a real thermal camera, sometimes called FLIR cameras. But they're really expensive. And also, you can't necessarily integrate them into your project. They might be, well, first off, they're expensive and delicate. But second, they usually need like a high speed uh, interface. Sometimes they're USB cameras. What's nice about this is it all works over I2C. So it's very easy to add to any microcontroller or microcomputer project. Um, and we have example code for both Arduino compatibles and Raspberry Pi. So I have. Yeah, and you, uh, Dean did this one. Yes, this is a first project by Dean, yeah. who has joined me. I now have someone here at Adafruit who's working on hardware with me. Yeah, Dean um, was one of our software developers, and he decided he wanted to do embedded work, and so now he's working with you yep. doing hardware. K10 also did um, some of the hardware design. So yeah. K10 did the original PCB design, and then Dean did the revision design and also the software. So I uh, got to experience kind of everything you, from... You have a crew. I have a crew now. Okay. So you have to do a lot. On the overhead? Mm-hmm. So this is um, the sensor, and you can see there's this is like the little lens. We have uh, level shifting and power regulation. The lens is right in the middle. It looks like it's offset, but that's because we put, wanted to put the lens in the very center. And um, here I have it just connected up to my Metro, it's just Arduino compatible. And I hooked up um, one of our uh, eight by eight, uh, sorry, uh, 144, it's a 1.44 inch 128 by 128 pixel. And I just have each uh, of the sensor outputs uh, connected, you know, basically outputs to a block. Now, when you read from the sensor, it gives you a 64 point Celsius measurement in floating point. But we just basically map that to some colors and put that here. What well, you're seeing actually, this this red dot is actually the camera, because the uh, the camera is actually a little bit hot, so you see a little bit of a red dot hmm. here. But um, if I tilt this, and then I can put my hand over it, you can see, you know, I don't have very hot hands. Let me see what happens to me. Oh yeah, you should put your hand over it. Yeah, you're much warmer. Yeah, I always run a little hot. Ooh, yeah, you're super hot. Look at that. You're like red. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm always running a fever. Yeah. So you can you can keeps, also keeps the germs out. So you can use it as like a you know a camera array, and it runs at 10 hertz. You can also, of course, uh, it'll tell you the temperature at each point if you want. Um, there's some example code that that they released, Panasonic, was for like human detection. Yeah, hello. Your thumb isn't that hot. No. That's not where the heat leaves me. Yeah, there you are. Yeah. Super warm there. Yeah. Like on fire. Professor Xavier wanted me to do all this stuff, but I wasn't into it. Anyways. Um, yeah. So you can use this with Arduino, and you get um, eight by eight grid. Uh, it's pretty good. If you're willing to use a Raspberry Pi, or actually probably a, just a more powerful microcontroller, you can do some filtering on the output, and you can actually um, because it's measuring. Um, you know, like environmental, it's an you know, environmental sensor and, and oh, hold on, let me just make sure this doesn't get unplugged. One second. Oh, of course, that was not really plugged in. Hold on. What do you want to do? I have to, it, you know, I pulled it. it I'm not alone again. Out. Yeah, this kind of happens to me. Hold on. I'll, I'll cut to the video. Oh, you have this plugged in. Do you need a plug? What? Do you need a... I need Every single outlet is taken. All the outlets are taken. Do we, do we really need... I don't know. What do you need? Uh, you know, oh, sure. Yeah, this one. I'm going to plug this. Okay. Whoa. Uh, what? I just unplugged this. No? No, that... You can't... That was the worst thing to unplug. <laughs> <coughs> that was that was bad. Uh, I think um, I I think you locked me out of Wirecast. Sorry. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Whew. <laughs> All right. <coughs> yeah. Now what? Okay, I'm bringing my my demo back up. Live demos. Moral of the story is watch out for where the plug is. Okay, so can we go to the uh, overhead? Yeah. For those of you 
Wirecast. If you unplug a secondary monitor, you Don't do get that. locked out of Wirecast. Yeah, I was like, okay, unplug this. He's like, yeah, sure. Um, so what's neat about this is um, with a Raspberry Pi, you can use the um, filtering capabilities that are built into Python using SciPy to do uh, 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 bicubic, like, uh, averaging. And so you take the 64 points, but you can turn it into 124 points. So you can get a lot higher precision if you like you can move your fingers and you can actually see individual points and actually what's easy is you can see above both the camera and um, the, the the line here is the lights the fluorescent light above I wonder That's how far I can get away where it still says like no you're hot this is why MOSFET the cat will not leave me alone because I'm warm and he just uses me as a heating pad you're super warm uh, okay Okay, so that's the demo, finally. Okay. That's and with, it. And with that, Lady Ada, is, uh, that, was, that was new products. You're done. Yay. All right, just a reminder, code is, hey, Jessica, 10% off the Adafruit store all the way up to 11.59 p.m. Let's do some questions. Type your questions in the chat, chats, and we'll answer them as fast as we can. Okay, uh, can that pick up a heat source from 23 feet away? I think it's about seven meters is the distance. I mean, the farther away, it's just the squares that indicate the sensor um, element just get bigger and bigger and bigger. So like in theory, you can do like infinite, but it's just you get you average huge amounts of space. Okay. Uh, can I replace polyfuses with normal fuses? If so, how? You can, but I would just stick with a polyfuse. I mean, a polyfuse, the whole point is that it's resettable so that you don't have to worry about... Um, like it blowing and then you have to replace it each time a polyfuse will reset after like a few minutes uh can you ship these overseas nope usa only yes usa only okay uh next up uh does does adafruit know about first robotics competition yeah yes do. we even sell first robotics badges yeah uh question on a project i want to pick up uh 1900 megahertz to 2200 megahertz cell phone signals and make them trigger led lights what, is, what were those little keychains that when your yeah, like, phone rang, they would light up or something? Yeah, they just like had a coil and it just you know resonated that frequency. I don't know of anything offhand. I mean, there's there's cell phone ring detectors, but yeah, they basically just look for RF noise. You can you know maybe find you know some spectrum analyzer that goes to two point four gigahertz. And yeah, then, but it's just like that's kind of expensive and annoying. Yeah, the only thing I can think of is maybe you could tap into one of those. Um, cell phone uh, amplifiers that like it pretends to be like a little mini tower yeah because those would know that a, a call's coming in and you could um, probe the board to see if it if it's detecting anything and then you could yeah that's it's gonna be a lot of encrypted yeah. stuff so you're not gonna see the actual data but you, see the data, you would know more or but less maybe, maybe yeah. there's like an led or something that tells you oh yeah. hey the amplifier turned on okay uh next up uh what about that ESP something something TV out library? What was the TV out thing that we showed? Wasn't that the circuit playground? That was uh, Sam D21. Yeah, it's been published. It's okay. on Learn. Uh, what C++ text editor IDE do you like to write code? Any code editor you like. Okay. Uh, is there any reason the software serial blows up on ESP32? Need three serial ports, only one is available, don't need speed. Honestly, the ESP32 <laughs> is still under a lot of development. I'd open up an issue and let them know, but... Okay. Uh, I think they only really have, you know, two serial ports, one's used for debugging and one's available, so I don't think you can get three. Do you know of a good resettable thermal fuse for a heater? Um, I just checked DigiKey or Mauser or something, just, just figure out what amperage you need and the voltage okay. you need. Can you use drone batteries to power Raspberry Pi? They are cheap. I don't know. I mean, I think a lot of drone batteries, you know, they're cheap because they're small, um, and they're also probably three volts, so you'll, you know, 3.7 volts, you'll need to boost them up. So while you can, it's not recommended. I would, I would really just plug in your Pi into a power supply. Okay. Uh, if you wanted to control a servo with an Oculus Rift, how would you go about doing that? Jeez, I don't know. Well, the Oculus Rift. API. Well, the Oculus Rift, you you would be. I think you could detect something because there is video going into it. It's sending information into a computer. You would probably be able to tap that. Yeah, I don't know. Um, if it if it plugs into USB and a monitor, maybe you could like sniff the USB and see like what's going on. Actually, I don't have I one. I don't actually know how Oculus Rift communicates. Well, it's a monitor in some way, for sure. Yeah, but how does it send data back? Is it USB? I don't know what it plugs into, but yeah. it, but whatever it's going back into, yeah. you'd be able to. You'd have to figure out what, what that signal yeah. is and if there's an API. I mean, there's probably an API that they we have. We showed how to reverse engineer the Kinect, and we were able to figure out what the Kinect was doing. So it might be like that. It might be like yeah. that. Okay. 
Uh, that's on our GitHub. We have died. Um, let's see. Yep, the logo does. Uh, it is like Starfruit. That's right. Yes. Uh, let's see. Those are the questions. Oh, great. Yeah, we finished on time. Good stuff. Okay. Um, we're going to um, do the code again. Yes. And we're also going to do a giveaway. Is that, is that twist thing, that new thing? That's yeah, I, I change it up. I mix it up a little really, bit. I mix really it up a little bit. I mix, I like it's mix never it boring here at Shea Fruit. Yeah. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to um, give something away. So. What are the rules? Rules are if you want something, you can't <laughs> win again. Only one winner per lifetime. Please let everyone have a chance to win. Uh, to win, you have to call the phone number, and we'll pick up the phone if you're the caller that gets through first. And we'll ask you your name, where you're calling from, and uh, maybe something you're working on. Maybe just give a shout out to the audience. You will be broadcast all over the internet, which is amazing. And uh, the prize today is um, if you're in the US, we will send you an AMG 8833 or a signed copy of Make 57. If you're outside the US, we'll send you a copy of Make 57. Sound good? Yeah. Okay, uh, let's do this. Um, first caller wins. Are you ready? Yeah. Hello, and welcome to Ask Engineer. You're the first caller. Congratulations. What's your name, and where are you calling from? Wait, they hung up. They hung up. Okay. The next caller wins. Next caller wins. anything away. We'll hang out here. I'm not going anywhere. Do, 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 do. Anyways, that's the phone number. Maybe something. Oh, hey. Oh, okay. Don't give up yet. I never give up. Hello, you've reached Ask Engineer. You're the winner. Please state your name and where you're calling from. Hello. Hello, you're, you've called Ask Engineer. Please state your name and where you're calling from. Hi, uh, I am Logan. I'm calling from Northwest Indiana. Okay. Hey, Logan. Hey, Logan. Well, congratulations. You're the winner. We're going to send you out either a thermal camera, ca thermal camera breakout or a signed magazine. Which uh, one would you like? I like doing that movie, Logan. Uh, I'd like the camera breakout. Okay. Uh, you're I'm curious what I'm working on. Yeah, what are you working on? Uh, well, currently I'm working with uh, my mentor on a remote control lawnmower, and I'm using some of your parts, so that would be pretty sweet when it's done. Okay, you can put this thermal camera detector on it and like use human detection so you don't run over cats or humans or oh, dogs. Yeah. That's, a, that's a good use yeah. for it. All right, well, thank you for uh, calling in since you've won. Please email support at adafruit.com, S-U-P-P-O-R-T at yeah. Adafruit, and say, hey, I'm Logan from, was it northern Indiana? Near Chicago. Oh, sorry, Chicago. And uh, you will get your AMG 8833. It's part number... 3538. If you tell them it's part number 3538, that'll really help them out. Alright. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks, 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 Logan. We really like doing that movie. Yeah. Bye. Yes, thank you. Bye. You've got adamantium claws and stuff? He was with that professor, Xavier guy, that wanted that me to That wanted you be, because you're so hot. Because I'm, uh, yeah, I can shoot fire. Yeah. It's just fun, fun of bars. Okay. Okay. That's the show for tonight, Lady Ada. Yes. Thank you, everybody out there, all of our Adafruit remote team members are Adafruit team members who help run the show. Um, we had a bunch of people stop into the chat. Thanks for all the kind words and support. The code is Lady Jessica all the way up until 11.59 p.m. Um, we're here next week. We'll have some more shows. We have a couple of videos that we're launching this week and more. And I got a special request. Someone said, not a big deal, but don't say a picture of a cat. Just say, it's a picture of MOSFET. It's true. Yeah. You shouldn't trivialize his... Well, well, it's not a random cat. It is MOSFET, and it's, he has a specific name. So here's a picture of... MOSFET. MOSFET. The cat. Can yeah. I say that? I yeah. Think, yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. Cat. Full name. And, MOSFET uh, cat. Thank you, everybody. Here is your moment of Zener. Night-night. <laughs>